Hello everyone. Another Arch install video? Am I crazy? Well, enough has changed that some of my older videos are getting out of date. Also, as of today, the Arch install script is still unfinished and the project seems to be stalled for some time. So today, we're doing things the official Arch way, right after this. So, back to basics. Today I'm going to walk through step by step how I install Arch on my own hardware. I'll be using a Linux KVM since your hardware is likely different from mine, and I believe it's good to practice and test on a virtual machine first. Let's fire it up. First thing I have to do is go into the uh, boot line here and set my video resolution for my KVM. 1920 by 1080 and control X and boots from that entry. So here it's coming up. And there we go, kernel 618. Let's make the font size bigger for you guys. Set font ter 128n, terminus 128. IP address is a private valid IP address and I can ping Cloudflare, so that's good. If you have a Wi-Fi card, not ethernet, um, then just use the IWCTL uh, utility. You can check the Arch Wiki links below on how to do that for your Wi-Fi card. But we don't have a Wi-Fi card. We have Ethernet, so let's move on with LSBLK. Dev VDA is our target disk, 64 gigs, playing today. Let's set up our mirror list with Reflector. I'm in US. Uh, latest five mirrors and we'll sort them by rate and we'll save the mirror list to etsy pacman.d mirror list. Again, change these variables as you see fit and where you are in the world. Okay, so the mirror list has been created. Let's edit pacman here quickly with nano etsy pacman.conf. I like to do is enable the color option under miscellaneous options. And also parallel downloads equals five to speed things up a little bit and help saturate my network connection. Okay, so once that's done, let me clear the screen. Let me check the NTP status, time date CTL. NTP service is active and our clock is synchronized. Yay. Okay, let's synchronize with mirrors with Pac-Man SYY. So that's done. So let's partition the disk with GDisk dev VDA. This is a GPT disk. First partition will be 512 megs. And if type EF00 for EFI system partition, we'll call this partition boot. Then the second and last partition for the rest of the disk, just hit keep entering here. Um, and that'll be the Linux file system. We'll call the second partition the root uh, partition which will be formatted with BTRFS later. So this is it, looks good. The partition table is okay. Two partitions, very simple. Okay, so let's format the EFI partition with makefs, vfat, call it boot, dev VDA1. And then for the butterfs root uh, partition, we'll call that one root. And that will be, of course, dev VDA2, as you've guessed. All right, everything worked well. Let's clear the terminal. Let's mount the uh, root partition, mount dev VDA2 on slash mount. Let's go to slash mount. And what I like to do is create the subvolumes. So butterfs subvolume create at for the root subvolume, also for var cache. Also for home. Next, create the images subvolume. Var log, snapshots, and there we go. All our subvolumes have been created. I'll show you the mount points in a moment. Let's unmount slash mount, and let's remount it with the proper and desired ButterFS options, mount options. So mount-o for options. I like to compress 
uh, with Z standard level one, no access time to wear out to not wear out the SSDs. Subvol equals at for the root subvolume, dev VDA2 on slash mount. So now that we've done that, we can create the mount points for the other subvolumes. Make dir dash p slash mount slash and then open curly brace, boot slash EFI for the uh, EFI partition, home dot snapshots, var, and then curly in curly braces, we got cache, log, and then for the uh, libvirt virtual machines, uh, we want a separate um, subvolume for that. Lib libvirt images, and then two closing curly braces, and that should do the trick. Okay. So um, let's mount the other subvolumes here. Let's do for var cache. So use the up arrow key to help save a lot of typing. Do the same thing for home. Remember, everything is under slash mount. So that'll be the root file system subvolumes here. Images. So that'll be under uh, mount var lib libvert images. Great hypervisor. Linux KVM. That's what we're running right now. All right. Then for var log, we'll do mount var log. Okay, that's done. And also snapshots. So where our ButterFS root snapshots are stored in slash dot snapshots kind of hides the uh, directory. Okay, let's mount the boot subvolume. Don't forget that. Mount dev VDA1 on mount boot EFI, which is a FAT32 file system. LSPLK shows everything is mounted for both partitions, including all the subvolumes. Okay, pack strap, we're ready. Dash K to initialize initiate the key ring on slash mount. We want base, base dash devel, git, Linux, Linux firmware, nano for the editing, open SSH if you want SSH into your device, reflector, where we're continuing to use, rsync. Here we go. And uh, That'll pack strap our basic Arch Linux install onto our root ButterFS file system. And it's done. A couple errors we can ignore. Let's generate the file system table, dash u slash mount, and go to slash mount Etsy file system table, FS tab. Okay, so Arch Chirut slash mount. Let's change root into our freshly installed base system, packstrapped. Let's check the file system table here pretty quick uh, and make sure everything is okay. Yeah, space cache equals v2 is enabled properly and you will have CSSD if you have an SSD um, bare metal machine. Okay, Ellen, SF, and we're in the Los Angeles time zone. So we're linking the Zone Info America Los Angeles to Etsy local time. Again, change that as you see fit or where you are in the world. So let's do a hardware clock system to hardware clock and hardware clock is at the UTC, universal time coordinated. Let's do the reflector again. As before, country is US, latest five, sort rate. ArchWiki shows you uh, proper uh, examples of reflector if you should you need them. Okay, we're gonna set up the new mirror list here. Should be very similar to the uh, one for the install environment. Okay, that's done. Let's do a pacman-syy to synchronize with our mirrors core extra and community. Let's uh, do nano etsy locale.gen. So our locale want to uncomment uh, en underscore us dot utf dash eight or utf dash eight. That's my locale. Again, 
choose a different locale depending on where you are and what you want to do. So once that's done, we can type locale-gen. And so the locale has been taken care of. So let's echo lang equals en underscore us dot utf dash eight, because that's in my environment. We'll write it to etsy locale dot conf. Okay, localization is complete. Next, let's uh, set the host name with echo archie one as is um, pretty standard for this YouTube channel. So we we'll write that to host name. So archie one. Let's edit Etsy hosts. So we do the usual thing here, 127.0.0.1. We tab over and we write localhost. Same thing for IP version six, colon, colon one, it's also localhost. Then 127.0.1.1 will be archie1.local domain. And then the alias is archie1. And that's our Etsy host file. Nice and easy. Okay, moving right along. Let's clear the terminal. And uh, so next, what I'm going to do is uh, make your Git package list because I'm going to pull down from my GitHub site my package lists for today. So let me go in there and let me git clone uh, the link I'll put in the description below. Don't worry. So https colon slash slash github.com slash Stevens Tech Talks slash Arch Linux. That should pull everything. So I'm not finished with this uh, Git repository yet. I might be doing some more things here. But today is uh, today's date. We're doing XFCE today. XFCE desktops, pretty popular. I'd like to check out uh, XFCE 4.18. All right, so nano etsy pacman.conf. So before we start installing these packages, let me turn on color and parallel downloads. So we have five parallel downloads at a time to help make best use of our network connection. Let's synchronize with the mirrors. All right. So let's install the first package list, pacman-s, dash dash needed. And the first package list is archiso packlist.txt. So let that install. Again, I strongly encourage you to look through my repository and make changes as you see fit on those package lists. You probably want to make some changes. So next, we'll install the drivers. Again, heavily dependent on what kind of hardware you have. So I put in a pretty good subset here of hardware drivers. And uh, so that's done. So what I like about these separate package lists is everything is modular. So you can just mix and match depending on what kind of Arch install you want, including window, i3 window manager or whatever. Let's install the networking packages now. And that's done. And uh, next step is installing all the fonts. I have a whole bunch of tree type fonts and other fonts that I like for my environments. Again, if you're installing a different environment, you want to change the fonts maybe. Okay, um, let's install the print packages because I like my printing. I need to have my printing functional. Okay, that's done. And uh, next, some multimedia stuff. Who doesn't like multimedia, right? Okay. Again, look at those lists of packages and make sure you're happy with what they contain before you install it on your system. Xorg. Okay, that's finished. And then we want to do XFCE, all the packages. So I want everything in group XFCE4 and everything in group XFCE4 goodies. So all for both options. So let that install. There we go. And finally, let's install a few random apps here. 
like LibreOffice, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so XDG Desktop Portal is uh, GTK because XFCE is a G GTK3 environment. So I choose uh, option two here. Okay. And be careful of that, what you choose. So option two, GTK. All right, so we're done with the package install. Pretty easy, huh? A lot less typing than before. Okay, so we got a new password for the root. Uh, let's add my account, user add, dash M dash G. Uh, groups will be sys, log, network, floppy, and you can remove some of these if you don't need them. This is a good complete set though. I'll just put them in there for your reference. RF kill users, video storage, optical, LP for line printer, audio, wheel, very important so we can sudo, ADM, and the shell with dash S shall be slash bin slash Z shell. And the username will be Steven. Hit enter, do a password for my account, enter it once and enter it twice. And there it goes. So let's export a visual, can't type today, equals nano. I want to use the nano editor for vi sudo, etsy sudoers. And we'd like to uncomment the wheel section. So all members of group wheel can sudo. So uncomment wheel. And there we go. Right, ID Steven, if you look here, uh, I, a group 998 is wheel. So Steven is a member of the uh, wheel uh, group. So grub install, let's install the grub bootloader. Uh, target is x86 underscore 64 dash EFI. Same with your AMD system. Uh, EFI directory is boot EFI. That's where we have the EFI partition mounted. And the bootloader ID shall be Arch Linux. So your EFI system shows this as a boot entry, Arch Linux, so you know what you're booting. No error reporter, good. Reported, good. <laughs> grub, mkconfig-o boot grub, grub.cfg. So we can configure the default grub configurations. That looks like it worked. Let's nano etsy mkinit copyio.conf because in the binary section, I wanna add the butterfs module. So in case I have to do a system repair or a file system repair, I can do that uh, using single user mode if I have the ButterFS module already loaded. Okay, don't have to, but I find it's a little safer. Make init copyio p Linux, since we've just edited the uh, conf file. And uh, here we go. We've got uh, the images made, including the fallback image. Okay, let's enable some system services. System CTL, enable Avahi uh, daemon. That's for explore, uh, detecting what's on the network. Let's enable Bluetooth service as well. And the HaveGed service for proper randomization for certain services. Good, let's enable printing with cups. And uh, also the firewall daemon. So we've got the firewall running out of the box. Uh, for SSD, the file system trim timer. And also the SDDM display manager as well, so we can log in, right? Network manager, so we can configure using our desktop. 
your networking. Reflector, so we were using that, so we can automatically update, like every week or so, the mirror list. Enable secure shell daemon, and uPower. I think we are finished enabling all the services. So next, let's exit out of the shell, unmount everything we can. A lot of them are still busy, so we can't mount everything, but just about everything. Reboot. So proceeding with fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. That wasn't so bad, was it? Okay, there's the Arch Linux entry. Let's boot her up. And SDDM is in there. Very nice and fast boot. Cool. So we just have the XFCE session. If you installed other environments, uh, they will show up in the session list. Okay, we've logged in using our password and XFCE 4.18 in all its glory is presented. Kernel version 618, which is the latest as of today. So let's um, do a little configuration here. Let me go to appearance. No, no, let's go display first. Let me change uh, the screen resolution here. There, that's better. Of course, the fonts are super tiny, so let me fix that. Let me go to appearance again. Let me go to fonts so you guys can read what I'm doing. Uh, let's do a slight anti-aliasing and RGB as a subpixel order. And the DPI custom setting will be 1, 2, 0. There, I think you guys can read it better now. So we have a whole bunch of styles to choose from, from that package list earlier. So I'll just choose Adwaita Dark. And for the icon set, we'll do Papyrus Dark. All right, let's make that settings window a little bigger. And uh, let's see, let's go to desktop. So we've got a bunch of default XFCE wallpapers. You can install the Arch Linux wallpapers too. That's a separate package. I haven't done that today, but if you're bored with the XFCE default wallpapers, well, there it is. Um, let's see, I'll choose this one. How about that? That's a nice one. And that matches the Adwaita Dark um, set and interface. Power Manager, let me just turn off power uh, management. Let me just turn all that off because this is a demo. I don't want things to go blank on me. Let's see what else. Let's turn off the screensaver. So we've got a complete set of XFCE utilities here. All right, so let's open up the terminal. I think that looks very legible. I hope it is for you too. Okay, let's get clone https colon slash slash aur.archlinux.org slash yay. We're using yay as our aur helper today because I need to install some aur packages. So let's go to cd. Uh, yay directory and make package dash si. Let's enter my password for sudo. Sudo works, yay. Okay, and we'll install. So it's with Go. Yay is Go and Paru is Rust. But we'll do yay today to mix things up. So yay shows that it's functional. So we'll just remove the build directory, remove fr yay. Alrighty. So let's install with yay s snapper support. There we go. So we won't remove the dependencies. We want all these there. So let's not show any diffs and proceed with the installation. Snapper support, I believe, comes from Garuda Linux. It makes things a lot faster to configure when it comes to Snapper. So as you can see, it created uh, the uh, path uh, monitoring system for snapshots. The config failed because the .snapshots directory already exists, so let's fix that. But it looks like everything else is configured properly. So uh, let's fix things with sudo-s cd to the root directory 
umount slash dot snapshots because we need to remove it so that we can recreate the root configuration for snapper with the this command snapper dash c uh, root would be root config create config slash and that's done so now that's done butterfs subvolume list now this snapper uh, create config command created this extra subvolume that we need to get rid of. We only want at snapshots, not dot snapshots, because dot snapshots is not re uh, referenced in the Etsy file system table. We can do that by typing butterfs subvolume delete slash dot snapshots, and there it is. Now if I do subvolume list, the uh, extraneous dot snapshot subvolume is gone. Good, we're nice and clean again. Let's recreate the directory, make dear slash dot snapshots. And then we can reference the file system table by typing mount dash a. And then lsblk shows all the subvolumes, including snapshots and bootify. Everything is mounted properly without error. Good. So, um, got one more thing to do here though. Uh, butterfs subvol get default slash shows the default subvolume as the file system tree id5 we don't want that we want at as the default subvolume so if i do a list the subvolumes you see id256 is the at path for the at or root subvolume so let's change that the default subvolume to at with butterfs subvol set def def 256 slash so let's check it again there it is that's the proper default so that the boot from snapshots and snapshotting in general works properly speaking of which snapper ls we have we don't have any snapshots yet it's just the current configuration for the file system is a current single snapshot you always have that regardless if every time you haven't mounted so Let's edit the configs, vim etsy snapper configs root. I want to turn some things off here. But before I do that, let me add wheel as, so that the user Steven and other wheel members can do a snapper ls. Let me turn off uh, timeline create. It's what Garuda Linux recommends. It keeps things a little cleaner. And we'll also configure the limits here for timeline cleanup to make it more like the arch wiki suggestions i just change those again you can play around with these to your heart's content and whatever your needs are so the snapper configuration for the root file system is complete so we'll write it and quit and there we go so let's chone dash recursive colon wheel slash dot snapshots that means all wheel group members can do a snapper ls right let's type snapper ls as you can see as steven i can list the snapshots can come in handy so you don't have to become root to do that just a matter of convenience right so let's become root again with sudo dash s let me go to the root directory let me do a snapper dash c root config and we create our first snapshot dash d and then in uh quotes double quotes uh three asterisks framed system installed it's because we have a freshly installed system so this is our first manually created snapshot so if i do a snapper ls you can see we've got a another single snapshot snapshot number one with a description snap system installed very good, and the date, which was done. So systemctl status grub butterfest snapshot snapper service shows that it found this snapshot automatically because it's monitoring the snapshot directory, right? And it added this boot menu uh, entry for this snapshot to the grub uh, system. So the boot menu entry is there. So let's exit. And uh, let's clear the terminal. Let's install uh, the compressed ZRAM because we don't have swap configured, right? Because we want to save our SSDs. 
So ZRAM generator is enabled. As you can see, it did a snapper pre and a snapper post snapshot, pre-install and post-install of the ZRAM generator package. Here you go. So snapper ls shows you. We've got two more snapshots, as I just said, which comes in really handy. So uh, let's configure ZRAM, sudo nano etsy systemd zram generator.conf. It's a new file. And in here, we'll put a section for ZRAM0. And I want uh, the uh, ZRAM swap to be half RAM. So ZRAM size equals RAM over 2. I think that's pretty much the default, but I just put it in there anyway. Some people put it over 4. So sudo systemctl daemon reload. So it should reload the ZRAM daemon. All the daemons actually in systemd. And then systemctl start slash dev slash ZRAM0, which is the device we just created. So ZRAM CTL shows nothing. I think I may have to reboot to get ZRAM working. So, uh, yeah. So let me do that now. Let me see. See what happens if I reboot. Always good to sometimes reboot, right? It doesn't take that long. It's a fast system. Ah, Arch Linux snapshots already there. That's a hopeful sign. Well, let's boot into the main system again. And let me open up the terminal emul emulator. And yeah, free dash H shows we have half the uh, system RAM as swap, compressed via ZRAM. Very handy and doesn't touch your solid state drives. So let's install DUF for disk usage, Y-S DUF. And there it is. It, it creates uh, snapshot four and snapshot five for pre and post respectively. All right, so DUF shows the following. So here you get a good glance. You can pause the video if you like as to what uh, this system disk usage looks like. So everything is there. Let's reboot one more time. Let's say we broke our system and we'd like to roll back. Okay, so we're going to select the Arch Linux snapshots and all this stuff. I'm not sure where it went wrong. Let's pretend that it's broken. Pretend, right? So let me uh, boot from the system installed snapshot. And I'm going to choose not the fallback, but the regular image. We'll use the Intel microcode. Today, it's a read-write, a read-only snapshot, rather. Snapper does read-only snapshots by default. Remember that. Very important. So Blue Man Applet, yeah, we don't have Bluetooth hardware on this virtual machine. So let's see, how do we roll back the system? I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do that. Wish me luck, guys. Okay. <laughs> See if I can do it here. Let's become root. Again, we want to remember this is read-only file system. So we're going to do a little bit of extra work here to make it work. Snapper ls. So the hyphen next to one, that's the snapshot we're currently booted to, system installed. Right? That's the one we selected in the grub submenu. Keep number one, that's the number we want to remember. We want to roll back the system to snapshot number one. Roll back it to the initial system installation. So let's roll back now. All right, first step is, uh, because it's read-only, we want read-write, right? So mount-t for type butterfs. Option would be subvol equals slash for the root subvolume, dev vda2 slash mount. Okay, so cd slash mount. Yeah, it's read-only file system. Uh, the root one it is. So we've got at, at cache, at home, at images, at log, at snapshot. So at, the root subsystem, uh, subsystem, the uh, subvolume is defective, right? Pretend that's bad. So in order to get rid of it, we just delete everything in here. Or you can rename the subvolume as well. 
if you want to keep these files. But I'm just going to nuke all these files because I want to roll back. Just pretend everything is destroyed in the roots of volume. Okay, so uh, that's done. So now we can we should be able to subvolume delete slash mount slash at. Oops. Well, this worked before, guys. Um, it's not deleting anything. It's giving me a warning here. I'm wondering if that's because the root subvolume that we have mounted on is read only. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I'll try it again. Nope. All the files are gone. It should be able to delete the subvolume. Okay, you know what? Um, let's think. Let me try one more time. No, okay. Let me try and reboot from the rollback system and then clean up from there, okay? Uh, so I'm going to move at to at.empty because I just erased everything in there. And what I'm going to do is recover, restore the roots of volume from snapshot one, right? So we can roll back. So let's do the rollback now. So you perform the roll bar back. This is the archway, all right? Not the snapper way or the open SUSE way, the archway. That's what we're doing today. So butterfs subvolume snapshot slash mount slash at snapshots one, right? Snapshot one, which is system installed slash snapshot on slash mount slash at. There we go. So if we do an ls mount, we can see we have at and at.empty. At is one what we want to boot from as we reboot. So let's uh, reboot now since the restoration is complete. We've rolled back. I'm going to prove it to you guys that we've rolled back. So, but before we reboot, let's unmount it and then we reboot. So, so that warning here you see is typical, by the way, on the snapshot that is expected. Okay, notice the uh, submenu is gone because we've rolled back to system. So, you no longer have a uh, snapshot submenu because system has been rolled back. But let me show you what we have here. So, Snapper LS shows um, that we still have all the snapshots because the snapshot uh, directory is still contains the snapshots, right? Um, so let's become root sudo dash s not a and uh, see if we can do some cleanup here. First of all, zram ctl shows our zram swap is gone, right? dash h there's no swap anymore because we rolled back to system so we don't have a zram anymore also duf is gone remember we installed that after we took the system installed snapshot so rollback has been successful the system is working again all right so to complete this video let's just make sure we can clean everything up so butterfs subvol list shows at dot empty and at and at.empty is ID256, and at is ID270. The default is still the old at, which is at.empty now, because I renamed it, right? So for Snapper to work properly, we need to uh, set the default to 270, which is the new at subvolume. So 270 is the default for root, or slash. And there we go. So that's taken care of. So now that it's no longer the default uh, subvolume, let's see if I can now get rid of at.empty. Let me figure this out, folks. Uh, Butterfest subvolume. Delete. Crossing fingers here, guys. Um, no, no, what I have to do is I have to mount it on slash mount because otherwise that's the safest way to do it. I'm going to do it like I did before. Uh, I'm going to mount dash T, butterfs, dash O, subvol equals slash, 
dev VDA2 on slash mount. And we're going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to try and delete the subvolume now. So ls slash mount, you've got at, which you want to keep. Don't delete that. You want at dot empty. You want to delete that subvolume. So butterfs subvolume delete, crossing fingers, guys, slash mount slash empty. Yay! Good. So we've cleaned up that useless old empty at dot empty. So let's unmount slash mount and let's do a list. And the at empty is gone. At dot empty is gone. Good. And you can see we've got all the snapshots here still. So we've got to clean that up. All right. Moving on. So snapper delete. And then I want to delete two because we're on snapshot one, right? So two, three, four, five. All the de defective snapshots are gone now. All right, because we're pretending the system was broken. We just recovered it by a rollback. And there you go, guys. All right, successful, successful rollback. As you can see, everything is working exactly as it should. Let's do a NeoFetch. And this is the NeoFetch. There you go. The good news with a rolling release like Arch is you should only need to install once. Having automatic bootable snapshots and working rollbacks helps make this possible. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.